Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session on Purple Martin Landlord Stewardship Activities. I appreciate you joining us. And thanks to the Purple Martin Conservation Association for facilitating this conference. I also want to acknowledge that I am uh, giving this presentation from Central Alberta, which is uh, part of Treaty 6 territory involving many uh, Indigenous peoples that uh, have stewarded this land in the past and also today. So I want to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Britt Anderson and Braden Kelly, were independent studies students from a couple of years ago, both of which, uh, or both of who gave a great effort in gathering data and analyzing, and uh, we're appreciating their efforts. I'm an environmental science professor from the University of Alberta, Augustana campus in Camrose. So the question today is, uh, how do nest box characteristics and landlord stewardship practices affect pur purple martin occupancy? As you know, they're beautiful birds and we love to have them around and uh, their survival depends on landlord practices that you perform. So there are many important characteristics of purple martins and uh, the one that we're gonna focus on today is the provision of human provided nest boxes and the care by the landlords associated with them. Uh, throughout history, uh, purple martins have adapted to living in and around and because of human provided nest boxes. And that's this reciprocal relationship uh, likely benefited both groups uh, in uh, times with uh, indigenous peoples as well as today. So we're concerned about the role of nest box provision because uh, purple martins as part of larger groups of aerial insectivores are in decline. Uh, according to most uh, status reports, they're secure in most of the range. Here in Alberta, they're listed one notch higher uh, as sensitive, largely because of the competition from house sparrows and nest um, European starlings. But if the trajectory of decline continues, we may see some more changes in the status reports. Okay, so the big question is that many new uh, Purple Martin landlords and experienced ones, how to attract and manage martins most effectively. There are a lot of guidebooks and a lot of advice and recommendations from many sources online, in print, and shared informally from person to person. So uh, some of these are, are based on tried and true methods. Some of them are uh, anecdotal. Some of them are based on a limited sample size. We wanted to ask the question, how do these practices that are suggested perform over a, a longer term and in specific locations. So we wanted to ask this question about Martin occupancy. Is it related to specific nest box characteristics that are recommended by uh, these various sources? And are, is occupancy related to landlord stewardship practices? Which practices are, are effective and which nest box characteristics are associated with higher or lower occupancy? We were fortunate here in Camros to have a long-term data set dating back to uh, 2003. And you can see by this chart that we have a good sense of the number of pairs of martins nesting in each uh, nest box. We have about uh, 80 some in the city, above about 30 or so each year are occupied by purple martins. And you can see patterns over the years of a high of 180 almost, a big decline here, and we're bouncing back fortunately in the recent uh, three years or so. So uh, of those 86 boxes then, each year uh, a person working for the city of Camrose conducts a census. Uh, in June, the peak of our nesting season, and we do that in the morning when the birds are likely to be around. We observe for 10 minutes and record all the purple martin pairs that we have. Here's a map of the city showing where the purple martins are located and whether they have been successful or not uh, with martins that year. So we have that long-term data set for each house. With that data set, we can then calculate martin occupancy. Uh, and there's three ways that we chose to do it. The percent of years occupied, the number of years divided by the number of years available. That's a percentage. The number of holes occupied over all the years that the house was available. And so we can calculate that. This one is probably the most uh, finely divided to differentiate 
success or not. And the last one is pretty coarsely divided. Were there Martins present at all in any of those years, yes or no? So those are the ones that we looked at, and you can see that there might be a few differences between them. All right, so let's take a look at the first question related to house characteristics. We uh, pulled out from all these recommendations the types of house characteristics and locations characteristics that were relevant to our location here. Uh, who the owner was, the house style, color, material, shape of the whole, uh, whether there was a winch on it, shrubs, distance to Martin houses, trees, water, housing, and height above the ground. Those were all important, and a lot of the landlords in our region spoke about these as being important. So we did a comparison statistically, looking at each of those house character characteristics with the nesting, uh, the occupancy. And we uh, used some statistics. This is a correlation. Don't be scared of the stats. But notice that those holes that have a semicircular uh, shape to them performed much better in terms of occupancy than the circular ones and the rectangular ones perform better than the circular ones. So there is an important connection there between whole shape. And a lot of you landlords are experimenting with different kinds. Here we've got a new one that we're working with called a triple nickel. It's a rectangular with looks like three holes, but separated enough for Martins to get in and out. Notice here that the material did not correlate with occupancy. Plastic and aluminum, there was no specific correlation there. However, white color performed better in terms of occupancy and a specific model of nest box in our area, the North Star model performed better than non North Star models. So we did these kinds of um, tests for each of those nest box characteristics and looked at how they perform. One did not uh, indicate any success or no success. House material didn't perform. The owners, if they were part of a citywide program for taking care of uh, Purple Martin nests performed better. The North Star style performed better, as you just saw. The outside color of white performed better. The horizontal or semicircular shapes performed better. If they had vertical accessibility, a winch to go up and down, they performed much better. If there were no shrubs at the base of the pole, they performed better. If they were a moderate distance to other Martin houses, they perform better rather than being very close or very far. If there is sufficient distance for Martins to zoom in and out of the house, they perform better. Closer distance to water bodies was better. Um, uh, a moderate distance to human housing perform better and higher above the ground perform better. So those are all individually connected to occupancy. We also wanted to check to see if there were any interactive effects of all those variables. So we put them all into a statistical model. Don't worry about the details. But four of those house characteristics arose to the surface as being more important than the others. And here they are in terms of each of these variables, percent of years occupied, the percent of holes occupied over all the years. And the last one, there was no uh, working model. Those four listed here are vertical accessibility, the presence of shrubs, especially no shrubs, ownership, and that tied to lots of information and distance to water. For the next one of occupancy, uh, the same four variables showed up, except in this case, there was a slightly different order. All right, so let's just review those uh, four that were most important. Close water bodies. I know some landlords provide water uh, through artificial means like a, a cow trough or a horse trough. But whatever natural or artificial, having water close by is important. Birds can travel significant distance to get water, but uh, they perform better in terms of occupancy if it's closer, within 200 meters from our study in cameras. Uh, no shrubs at the bottom was important. Uh, that's probably a historical uh, memory that Martins have, knowing that there could be predation arising in the colony coming up the pole, whether it's um, raccoons climbing a tree or snakes climbing a pole. So the cleaner it is, often through mowing, the better the birds do above. Accessibility uh, through a mechanical winch was really important, and that provided landlords with the opportunity to lower the house, um, assess the colony, perform checks, and perform whatever maintenance is needed, whether it's blowflies or nests or um, guards or whatever. 
And last one was ownership. Through our network here, we provide uh, timely and uh, detailed information to landlords that give them insight is as to how to uh, deal with the, the Martins. So that aided in improving occupancy. So we know the role of landlords, the folks that you, folks like you that are doing this. Uh, nest checks and other types of stewardship activities are really important. And again, those uh, recommendations coming from books and websites and fellow landlords are important. And here's a whole list of them that were relevant to us. We wanted to check those out with respect to the same data set, uh, those nest occupancy variables. So we then interviewed landlords in the fall of 2019. At this time, there were only 85 houses. We interviewed almost half of them and uh, 31 landlords responded. And we asked them about eight stewardship practices, whether or not they participated in those. We asked them what the most effective practices were and the key constraints. A fairly even split between males and females. The age was average age was 63 and they had about nine years of experience. Here's uh, a couple that are really uh, leaders in our community. The most effective practices, some were unsure in orange here, 29%. Uh, active management, 16%. Controlling predators, 8%, 18%. Having a good location, 8%. Controlling bullfies, 8%. Removing competitor nests, 8%. Cleaning nests, or 5%. Having a correct house style, 5% and adding nest material three. Okay, we asked them whether or not they had conducted each, any of these uh, stewardship practices. On average, uh, landlords participated in three of the eight stewardship practices. 10% did them all, all eight of them. They were amazing. However, over a third did none at all in our interviews. So sometimes they just put up a house and let it be, never to touch it again. All right, so which of these eight practices were uh, connected to higher occupancy rates? These top four in black bold were significant, statistically speaking, to higher occupancy rates. 60% of the landlords cleaned nests, 50% removed low five arva, 43 added nest materials, and 20% excluded predators. Surprisingly, these other uh, landlord practices were not correlated with the uh, occupancies that we had. Then we also uh, pooled all of those stewardship practices together to see which of those uh, were most important. So we conducted these um, a test called multiple linear regression. Again, don't worry about the details, but for the percent of years occupied, cleaning nests was the most important factor. And for the next uh, occupancy variable, the percent of holes occupied, removing blowfly larva was the most important variable. Each of these four were correlated with higher occupancy, but in each of these two uh, occupancy variables, cleaning nests or blowfly larva were most important. Again, we asked about the key constraints from these landlords. Some listed nothing, they didn't have any problems at all. Some listed time, 17%, a predator, Merlins, 14%, sparrows and starlings, 17%, low Martin numbers. It's hard to get enthusiastic about doing stewardship practices when you have low Martin numbers, perhaps. Uh, not wanting to disturb the young, 5%, remembering, 5%, and being unsure about what to do, 3%. Okay, our study had a few limitations, of course. Uh, we only measured occupancy, and the reason for that was many of these nest boxes were on private land, and we couldn't um, access those and lower the house to check on nesting success or whatever. But uh, in future years, that would be good. We didn't measure things like cavity size or hole size, again, because of those being on private property. There certainly is room for uh, conducting other tests related to new stewardship practices, hole guards, um, the amount of effort. Um, some um, landlords check weekly, some every two days, some every day. And we could conduct controlled experiments to really narrow the, the effect of these practices on specific outcomes. And of course, our study was conducted in cameras, which has some unique characteristics that are different, say, than a colony in Pennsylvania or Texas or Florida. 
So what does this all mean? Well, um, in the bigger picture, it's important to address a species need before the population declines. Purple martins are right on the edge. There's de they're declining, but they're not uh, endangered yet. It would be wise for the wildlife conservation community to address these declines before they are severe. And some species, in particular, purple martins require special proactive efforts uh, because of their heavy dependence on human provided nest boxes. So it's wise to evaluate which activities are most helpful. Those anecdotal reports are important. And indeed, most of those activities are, um, have been uh, supported by this scientific research. So that's really scientifically viable. So that's important. And we should listen to um, our fellow landlords and the recommendations from guidebooks. All right, that's it for me. Uh, I want to especially thank the Camels Wildlife Stewardship Society, the city, the past coordinators that collected some of these data, the landlords that were so important. Um, my co-authors and I have recently published the results of both halves of this talk in the Wildlife Society Bulletin. You can access those papers with this website here and the one down below. And uh, if you want more information, please dive into that. And I'd be happy to, to contact you uh, or to respond to any questions that you may have. Thanks again. Take care.